day. Welcome to the second lesson of NSACO Physical Science in a series of two lessons. The topic of this lesson is identification of cations. The objectives of this lesson are to use qualitative analysis in the identification of cations. Describe the use of the following tests to identify aqueous cations like ammonium, zinc, copper 2, iron 2 and iron 3 using aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia as appropriate. Let's switch over to hear what Mary and her mom discuss about this topic. You are late. Where have you been? We don't have the whole day. Sorry, Mom. Okay. Now, the last time we tested for negative ions. Today we are going to test for positive ions. Do they have a special name? Yes, they are called cations. Today we will test for the following cations. Iron to iron, iron three ions, zinc ions, copper two ions, and ammonium ions. Now before we start, please have your record book and pen ready. To test for cations, we use aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia. To test for iron 2 plus ions, we add a couple of drops of sodium hydroxide. And shake it. What do you see? A green precipitate. Yes. This is a green precipitate. Don't forget to record that in your notebook. Next, I will add excess sodium hydroxide. And see if the precipitate dissolves. No, it doesn't. Okay. The precipitate is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. Okay. Now, to test for iron 3 ions, I will add a few drops of aqueous sodium hydroxide. And then, I will shake it. What do you see? A red-brown precipitate. Mm, yes. Now, I will add excess aqueous sodium hydroxide and see if the precipitate will dissolve. Now let's see if it dissolves. No, it doesn't dissolve. Okay. Next, we will test for zinc ions. I will add a couple of drops from the aqueous sodium hydroxide. And then, I will shake it. What do you see? A white precipitate. Okay. Now, I will add excess sodium hydroxide. <coughs> to see whether the precipitate will dissolve. Now, let's see if the precipitate will dissolve. Yes, it does, but it's getting a little bit lighter. Okay. Now, to the test tube with copper 2 iron solution, I will add a few drops of aqueous sodium chloride hydroxide. And then shake it. What do you see? A light blue precipitate. Now, I will add excess sodium hydroxide to 
see whether the precipitate will dissolve. No, it doesn't. Okay. Now I will test the other portion of aqueous iron to ions with aqueous ammonia. I will add a few drops of aqueous ammonia. And shake it. What do you see? A green precipitate. Good. Now I will add excess ammonia to see whether the precipitate will dissolve. What do you see? No, it doesn't. Good. Now, I will add a couple of drops to the iron three ions with aqueous ammonia. And shake it. What do you see? A red brown precipitate. Okay. Now what happens? Open. What happens when I add excess ammonia? The precipitate doesn't dissolve. Good. Now, I will add a couple of drops of aqueous ammonia to the zinc ion solution. And shake it. What do you see? A white precipitate is formed again. Now, what happens when I add excess ammonia? The white precipitate dissolves to form a colorless solution. Good. Now to the copper to ions, I will also add a few drops of aqueous ammonia. And shake it. What do you see? A light blue precipitate. Good. Now what will happen if I add excess ammonia? The light blue precipitate changes color to deep blue precipitate. You see what happens is that the light blue precipitate dissolves to form a deep blue solution. Oh, I see. Okay. Now we will test for ammonium ions. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to heat the test tube of ammonia salt and it will produce ammonia gas. How can I know that the gas produces ammonia? by holding the litmus paper over the opening of the test tube. Wow, the litmus paper is turning blue. 
that confirms the presence of ammonium ions. And that is also the end of our test for the identification of ions. Thanks, Mom. It was great to observe all the color changes. I will definitely remember them since I saw them better myself. It's a pleasure, my dear. Let's now recap what we've learned today. Cations are positively charged ions. Here is a complete summary of all the tests for the different cations. Let's go through them again. To test for iron 2 ions, aqua sodium hydroxide will produce a green precipitate. Excess aqueous sodium hydroxide will produce an insoluble green precipitate. To test for iron 2 ions with aqueous ammonia, a green precipitate will also appear. Excess Aqueous ammonia will produce an insoluble green precipitate. To test for iron 3 ions with aqueous sodium hydroxide, a red brown precipitate will appear. Excess aqueous sodium hydroxide will produce an insoluble red brown precipitate. To test for iron 3 ions with aqueous ammonia, a red brown precipitate will appear. Excess aqueous ammonia will produce an insoluble red-brown precipitate. To test for zinc ions with aqueous sodium hydroxide, a white precipitate appears. With excess aqueous sodium hydroxide, it will produce a soluble white precipitate, giving a colorless solution. To test for zinc ions with aqueous ammonia, a white precipitate appears. With excess aqueous ammonia, a soluble white precipitate forms, giving a colorless solution. To test for copper 2 ions with aqueous sodium hydroxide, a light blue precipitate appears. With excess aqueous sodium hydroxide, an insoluble light blue precipitate appears. To test for copper 2 ions with aqueous ammonia, a light blue precipitate appears. With excess aqueous ammonia, a light blue precipitate appears, giving a dark blue solution. To test for ammonium ions, heat the solution. Red litmus paper will turn blue to confirm the production of ammonia gas. This brings us to the end of today's lesson. Goodbye. Get on the truth, baby.